everyone! Today we're gonna talk about tailoring a mill hauberk. So why do you want to tailor a hauberk? Well first off it was done historically, duh, so yeah, that's a reason. Second of all, because you're removing a lot of rings, you're also removing a lot of weight. And if you're uh, tailoring it correctly, as you can see you can wear it without a belt, all the weight is distributed and that way it feels very nicely, it follows your movements correctly. That's just what you want to go for. So first thing you want to do is you want to add a rider slit. As you've seen in a previous video about the Hauberg, uh, mine didn't have one. So the first thing you want to do is you want to add a rider slit because it will make it easier to pull it on. You can do the rider slit in two ways. The first, the primary one, is like I've done here. This is for uh, the cavalry. Uh, I'm reenacting a knight, a Norman knight. So, well, they were predominantly cavalry. So that way, this is uh, a better choice for me. You also see a lot of uh, foot soldiers that have the rider slit over here, and it's not a technically a rider slit because you can't ride a horse on it. Uh, but this way you can still kneel and stuff as uh, with the right slit like this. This also, if you want to sit on a bench sideways, you can do it like this. You, it's a bit difficult uh, with the slits on the side. And this way you have a lot more protection to your sides. Your crutch is a little bit less protected, but well, uh, in reenactment battles we don't want to go for each other's... Uh, so to make a rider slit, you want to lay the hauberk flat on the table, using a wooden stick uh, helps uh, in this case. Then uh, with measuring tape you determine the center and then you cut away this bit. Then you pull it on, then you put it on and then you determine where your crutch is. My uh, rider slit just ends right above the packer. This way you have the most movement and you won't uh, have any interference with uh, the hauberk. It will follow your movements very well. Now while you have the hauberk on, determine where your armpit is, on one side. Then you put a marker there, like a tie rip or another piece of uh, mail from a different color. And you put it in the uh, side of your uh, elbow cavity, I believe. And you want to see how much uh, the hauberk is uh, too wide. You can determine how wide it is by bending over. If you see a bulge hanging, then you know hey, it's way too big. So then you determine how much you want to cut off the sides, because that's where the tailoring is going to happen. And you're going to uh, put both arms on each other. And at the point of the marker, you're gonna cut away that uh, part of the arm. And you're gonna do that symmetrically, so both ends will have the same amount of uh, forearm removed. It needs to be very uh, specifically uh, symmetrical, because that will help you later. Now, to start cutting away, I cut away about uh, such an amount in total uh, on the sides. You just cut it away, you sew it shut and then uh, you put it on again and if you think oh that's uh, pretty good then you're gonna add two markers on one side one just about where the love handles uh, end and one just about uh, where the rib cage ends a little bit above that actually and between those you're gonna take away a big square of mail you're just gonna cut it away and that way it will as you can see it will go inside of this uh, cavity right here and that way it will rest on your love handles which means all the weight is gonna be here and not on your shoulders. 
this is what you want. This is also how backpacks in the military and such are designed to have the band run around here so all the weight is on your hips. Now there is the matter of the armpits. When you first remove all the mail from the sides you also go straight through the armpit. Make sure that if this is the width of male you're removing here, it also needs to be the width of the armpit right here, of the arm, because this is a different uh, pattern. Well, it's the same pattern, but just going the other direction. Here you can see uh, it's going one way, and the other is going that way. I'll give you a close up. It's very badly lit. Yes, that's how it's done. So, you're gonna cut, cut straight through there. Unless you have a, a ready made hauberk, then you also know how about the uh, uh, armpit fits together. So, you can also the same way shoot it shut. Now, going further, when that is all done, you also need to uh, try it on again. Try if the movement is good, like this. And uh, you may uh, encounter some inconvenience trying to make this movement by. Uh, tightening your chest and bringing the arms forward. Uh, this can contribute to uh, this being not wide enough so you'll need to uh, add some, few, some more rings so that it'll fit more comfortably. Now with all that out of the way we're gonna add the uh, forearms again and we're gonna do that um, obviously this is now a lot smaller than forearms are so it needs to be the same size obviously and then you want to add it with a triangle now the triangle you might have seen it uh, in a lot more videos or on uh, internet fora it's actually pretty simple but there's a catch it needs to be the point of the triangle needs to be exactly at the bone of the elbow the big bone right here it needs to be exactly there and you uh, need to remember the bone is more to this side than it is to that side so you may want to try it on a few more times to make it uh, fit exactly where it needs to be now, tailoring this to your forearm, you want to, uh, because the forearm makes this uh, shape, you want to contract a lot. So, uh, my recommendation is put uh, a contraction here, put a contraction there, because you want to work with double contractions, because it's uh, such a movement that it makes. You want this end to be you see it's a little bit baggy that's on purpose because you do want to uh, be able to stick your hand in and out uh, without a problem so that's why they are better like this but that's good so if it works it's uh, good and it fits very tightly around the arm for the most part so that's good so all in all these are all the steps you want to follow um, tailoring a hauberk. The whole process, because a lot of trial and error uh, was involved, took me about two weeks in total with uh, about every day about three or four hours of uh, work on average. It's all because of uh, the mistakes I've made and lessons I've learned and uh, some of the most time consuming things are the armpit and the elbow so be mindful of that you can make mistakes just you need to recognize you've made a mistake and then 
also uh, repair the mistake because you want it to be very perfect because else you will have a hard time so if you've made a mistake and it means you have to go through a lot of work uh, repairing the mistake do so it needs to be perfect to you because I have removed so much rings I have enough uh, rings to make myself something else like uh, one uh, leg protector a greave or uh, what I'm actually doing is making myself a coif to go around here because I'm reenacting uh, 11th century Norman knight and uh, well almost all of them had a coif uh, integrated with Halberg so yeah that's what I'm gonna do as you can also see this is also a bit odd if to some of you I will make a separate video about that because it's an interesting topic also uh, I will show you uh, the complete kit with the Norman helmet on with the shoes on everything uh, in due time if everything is uh, completed then uh, the video will be done one more tip I want to give be very patient in your work as I said if you've seen a mistake go to go through great lengths to repair that mistake whatever the doesn't matter how long it takes just repair the mistake make it better and that way you'll be very very happy about the hallback I am very happy about this one because as you can see as I've said no belt required this you don't see a lot I've got something unique it fits only me and it fits very good and that's about all I wanted to share with you so if you have any more questions leave them in the comment select uh, leave them in the comment section and I will see you in the next video goodbye